have the Ayatollah of Fantasy Rock and Roller with us today, Adam Rank. How are you doing, Rank? Um, you look great in person, and I uh, just can't wait to next year where we can pack it full of 25000 How are you doing? Hey, I'm doing great. I didn't know it was Ball Guy's day. It was being ranked. I mean, how do you lose? This is the Dynasty Vipers Vipercast. You heard the music. You know what time it is. It's time for the Dynasty Vipers Vipercast, episode 128, and we're sticking with the theme. We are presented by the Fantasy Points Media Group, and what better way to kick it off with one of the smartest men over at Fantasy Points. He's one of the far, fa, one of the smartest guys in all of fantasy football, scouting this, scouting that, Debbie this, Debbie that. It is Wes Huber. How you doing, Wes? Well, you know I'm doing good, man. Just living the dream, got the best job in the world, so... Uh, you know, I'm I'm always game to to get up with you know anybody and talk about some football. And football, we will talk about. Now we could take the easy route like most shows right now, and we could talk about the draft that just came down, and we could talk about first round, second round, third round kind of guys to target. But we're going to go deeper here because back before we get into that, but back in on <laughs> April 29th on FantasyPoints.com. You released kind of a little bit of deeper sleeper type of uh, Debbie drafting here as far as we're concerned. So we're going to get into that. We're going to talk about some guys we're going to target that we should be paying attention to. And we're going to talk about a little bit of 2023, just kind of a little bit of a, a primer for those already looking beyond 2022 season already. Because I know Major, he's got some pretty bad teams that 2022 is already a wash. He's already got to pay attention to what's going down in 2023. Don't you shake your head at me, Major. I've got, I can put you on mute right now. I will mute you right now before the show starts. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> I don't know how to. I don't know how to come back from that. See, I, I found being just loud and obnoxious is probably the best way to keep Major at bay for the most part here. But Wes, let's kind of dive into this <laughs> last class. I mean, we all know the names that we're supposed to know. I think that that horse has been beaten already many a times. A lot of teams, a lot of leagues are kicking off those fantasy football drafts right now. Uh, when I look at these rankings here, though. Who are some of those guys right now? Who are some Wes's wonders, so to speak? Who are some guys that you're kind of maybe targeting a little bit later in these fifth round, sixth round type of fantasy football drafts when it comes to rookies this year? Well, the first guy that stands out, I mean, you you look at you look at the Chicago Bears. So, uh, you know, we're a lot of a lot of doubts being passed around, but I'm gonna tell you, uh, don't doubt Justin Fields. I'm not saying that's my guy in the fifth or sixth round, but um, yeah, don't doubt Justin Fields. Uh, he, the guy hasn't even played 10 games in the NFL yet. Uh, you know, 100 percentile speed, and he's got a he's got a cannon as much as much arm talent as as uh, Trevor Lawrence. So uh, uh, so so you know you want to look at the parts around him. Obviously, Darnell Moody. Nobody's sleeping on him. But uh, you know, I like I like one of the little little bit of a sleeper signing there with um, uh, coming out of, of Kansas City. They got uh, well in, in the third round. They took Velas Jones. I love Velas Jones. Same. I really do. This guy, he's twenty five. He's older. He's an older guy. Um, but but in a redraft, I mean, this is a guy that you can get all over. But I, I even like him in fantasy because I think with the the talk and with the offensive coordinator talking right now, it sounds like he's going to take an immediate role. And it looks like he's going to start out of a slot. And uh, there's a guy that's coming up uh, next year, Hendon Hooker. Uh, he could really move up draft boards uh, out of Tennessee. And and he was a quarterback for Velas, and Velas just went off for him last year. I mean, he was just he was such a reliable piece, um, so valuable to him. And then the but the sleeper signing that that I was really excited about, Byron Pringle out of Kansas City. Uh, yeah, I don't care how old he is. This this kid can ball out. Um, he did have a recent arrest, so I mean we have we have to see what's going on there. But I think I think if if Pringle's on the field and he's starting, um, and you know we saw we saw what he could do with with Patrick Mahomes last year. Well, um, I, I'm pretty excited about him. So that that's one guy I like quite a bit there. And then you know there's there's some guys I could get. I could obviously go very deep into uh, 
uh, running back. But, um, it, you know, pointing just pointing out a guy that that I think that's that's being overlooked here. So Damian Pierce, he goes to Houston. Right. And we all think, oh, geez, it's the Damian Pierce show. I wouldn't go that far yet. I think it's going to be. I think it's going to be at least um, some type of rotation. I mean, if you look at if you look across the NFL, there's only a couple of bell cow situations remaining. I mean, we're talking and and honestly, and 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 from a, a lot of the sharps, uh, it sounds like it sounds like the situation in Tennessee. It may not be a bell cow anymore. It, Derrick Henry may be losing his bell cow status. So they they drafted Hassan Haskins. That's a guy I really like out of Tennessee in the in the. Uh, you know, not for the not for next year, but over over the you know next three four years, um, the situation there is uh, we really don't know. But the the insiders are are saying that we're looking at a rebuild in Tennessee. If that's the case, Derrick Henry is going to be twenty eight. Uh, he's twenty eight now. I mean, we're right. we're looking at looking to the future here. But uh, so uh, uh, you know, there's no bell cows going around here. We're we're getting into a situation. We added an extra game. We're gonna be seeing a lot more of those sixty forty timeshares and, and three headed backfields. Of course, we want to stay away from those. But as long as Rex Burkhead doesn't doesn't come in and take too much away, I think Marlon Mack is another guy that could come in here and steal some and 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 get a sixty percent carry share uh, for Houston. And that that offense is looking a little bit better. You know, it's it's not, obviously not going to be a, a team that's going to go to the playoffs or anything, but we don't really care about that in fantasy. So that's a guy that I like there quite a bit. You know, and we could go deeper. I, I, I talked about like Brian Kobach. He went to Minnesota. So Alexander Madison is looking at it. He's going to be an undrafted free agent next season. Uh, or excuse me, he's going to be an unrestricted free agent next season. Not as sharp. I'm a, I'm a morning guy. I'm not a late night guy. So you just have to bear with me. Um, you know, so we're going to we're going to see a changing of the guard here in Minnesota. Uh, you know, they could always re-sign Madison, but right now, I mean, they they did bring in um, uh, they brought in uh, from North Carolina. I'm, I'm slipping on the name here. Um, uh, but anyway, the guy I like there is Brian Kobach, and 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 I wrote him up in in the in in a recent article. Uh, you know, the only thing that I can figure is there must have been something that popped up in medicals or something that popped up in his background, and those are the, those are the two things. Something off the field. Those are the two things that you know I just don't have access to. Um, and and you know when you go into the draft process, uh, I really like. I mean, it, Brian Kobach, his his athletic testing is off the charts. Like, I was blown away he wasn't drafted. So there's a situation going on that I'm not aware of. But at the same time, that doesn't mean that he, when he gets on the field, he's not going to do something. Uh, Ty Chandler, that's the name I was trying to think of out of North Carolina. Oh, yeah. So they, they did draft him. But uh, Brian Kobach, I, I I think is going to stick on that roster. Of course, they have uh, Kane and in Wangu, so that that's another name. Another name, but he's been used mostly on special teams, and it's, I'm starting to get the the impression that that's kind of how they envision him because that's what they he he essentially did at Iowa State. So uh, you know the, that situation could could continue, and it could could mean that uh, you know somebody that 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 job that Madison's going to leave behind could be available for one of the other two. And just kind of speaking on Kopak there, I believe he had a game against Notre Dame last season. I think it was like a 20 carry, 114 yard game. I think if you look at what he did at that, uh, the Army Combine, I think he ran a 40 and I think it was 435. I mean, yeah. you, you speak about that athletic testing. I mean, those numbers were off the chart. What he did at Toledo was uh, averaged about 100 yards per game, 5.9 yards per carry. I don't care where you're at, those numbers translate pretty much across the board, right? Toledo, not a big school, but you see what he does against big-time competition like Notre Dame. So there's definitely a reason why he's on Wes's radar, so to speak, as far as one of these guys that, hey, you know what? I got a fifth, I got a sixth, I got a seventh-round draft pick here in a rookie draft. Here's a here's a target for me. I'm just going to throw that out there right now. Let's see what happens. Let's throw enough crap off a wall, see what sticks. And, hey, maybe Kopak, like you said, the opportunity is there. Delvin Cook, we know what's going on with these older running backs. Delvin Cook, he's still good. Madison's got that uh, free agency coming up. Ty Chandler. Had a transfer from Tennessee to come to Carolina. I mean, so there's that as well. We're looking at some guys here. It's like, okay, whatever. And you mentioned Hassan uh, Haskins. Haskins there. Haskins. Well, if if the Tennessee Titans aren't going to pay A.J. Brown, what makes you think they're going to pay an aging Derrick Henry moving forward? Right? This is stuff that you're thinking here right now. Now, is Haskins that guy? Is he the guy that's going to kind of be the next guy in Tennessee? 
uh, that's to be seen. But Derrick Henry, I mean, they gave him some money. They refused. They didn't give AJ Brown any more money. So I think we've seen probably this be Henry's last contract. Wouldn't you agree with that in Tennessee? I think so. Uh, well, you know, for all we know, he could they they could envision having him retire as a Titan, and and I, and I would understand that. Um, I, I think more than anything is is going into the situation knowing that uh, the the we don't want to draft Eric Henry thinking he's going to be a top ten running back anymore. Um, I think I think top twenty is around the range that we want to look at. I just uh, we haven't announced it yet, but I just did a full overhaul of our keeper ranks on the site, um, and and he dropped. I've got him. I've got him right now about. Um, six spots below market value. I've got him as the RB18 in Dynasty. And, uh, you know, and, that, and that's that's right around where he's going to stay until until we see what's going on there. So the thing about Hassan Haskins, uh, he didn't test. He was he injured his ankle actually in the Big Ten uh, championship. And then he did end up playing against Georgia. He was not the same running back. But, you know, obviously the game prior, the game that got him to the Big Ten championship, he scored five touchdowns against Ohio State. This guy was jumping over, you know, five-star athletes. I mean, uh, Hassan Haskins, so so we don't have his athletic testing. The thing is that we do have, we have his brother. His brother tested at the Combine, was drafted in the third round uh, seven or eight years ago as a linebacker or safety, one or the other, and uh, and he put up some ridiculous numbers, numbers that that are in line with, with what – Hassan Haskins put up prior to, to going to Michigan. So I like Hassan Haskins quite a bit. Uh, so, uh, you know, that that's a guy that that I'm definitely going after uh, in rookie drafts because I think I think this is going to be, you know, we know what Tennessee wants to do. They they want to they want to pound the ball inside. And that's that's where Hassan Haskins does a lot of his work. Yeah, I really like Hassan, too. Like, And I hope he doesn't really catch on fire because he's like one of my sleepers that but I'm hearing more and more rumblings of people uh, talking about how much they like him. But yeah, you pop in film. He's explosive. He's a power back. He ran pretty well. I think he ran like a four. Did he run a four three? Maybe. A, no, mm. I don't know. But he, he test this year. He okay. He, he injured his ankle. Yeah. So he didn't but on the field though, his he looks like he he runs by people. He runs over people. He has good hands. He has like all the attributes you're looking for in a. Uh, a three down back um but let's 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 get out of 2022 man that's like so last well, week i got i got a few more here i want to work a little bit i more need to get to 23 man come on matt just, just quick question here case so you got haskins or davis price out of lsu Ooh. who went to the 49ers there yeah so uh you know if if you watch um if you watch greg cosell on our our recent um uh shoot the thing where you know we have cosell and and adam uh, Kaplan on I, I forget the the title of it the the it, anyway he's he's talking um about that situation and and uh Tyrion David Davis Price it looks like he's jumped ahead of of Trey Sermon as far as uh what the 49ers want but we you know we really don't know that uh it, what what and it doesn't really matter I think I think what's really important there is that if uh, if we see Elijah Mitchell go down, so I, I absolutely love Elijah Mitchell. Don't don't get me wrong there. I, I'm I'm so high on this kid. Um, you know, I'm already I'm almost uh, he's he's easily the high the guy that I'm highest on over the consensus. I'm I'm nine spots over right now on Elijah Mitchell. I have his RB sixteen. Love this kid. Um, he put he really just I mean he took on such a massive share last year and and here's the thing to to really he he thought that the best way to draw NFL attention he shed a lot of body weight and then he ran a really good 40 time I mean he just put up athletic testing across the board that of course it was 2021 we didn't have the combine but uh it, you know so we're we're, we're kind of measuring all players under the the same scale there. Um, and, and he put up just ridiculous numbers. I'm talking like if he would have put up the numbers at his pro day, that if he would have put that up at a combine, he would be up there with like Jared, Jared McKinnon as one of the all-time greatest uh, running back performances at the combine. That's how dominant it, it was. It was just ridiculous. And uh, so I love him. I, I love him a lot. But we know what the 49ers want to do. They want to run. And, and it, if Mitchell goes down, it's going to be either Tyrion Davis Price or it's going to be Trey Sermon. Now, don't 
cross Trey Sermon off the list. If you look, go look at his first carry. He took one of the nastiest helmet to helmet hits on his very first NFL carry. It was disgusting. I, I looked like it broke his neck. It was right. nasty. And uh, uh, from a, I think it was a safety. I'm not 100 percent sure, but uh, it, it just got his NFL career off to a crazy bad start. So, but it doesn't matter. They went out and they got Tyrion Davis Price. I think they even drafted him higher than they did Sermon in the third round. And so they love this kid. They the, they believe in him. So if Mitchell goes down, one of these, one or maybe both, but I, I would probably I would probably think it's a hot hand type situation. And you know, one of them is going to take it and. Uh, so and and that's in, that's a role that we all want to pay attention to there in San Francisco. That's that's a team that we know can win, that can beat every team in the NFL on on any given Sunday. So that that's obviously a that's a, a league winner type of situation right there, and uh, that's something we all need to pay attention to. So Wes, I got a question for you. Why, as fantasy managers, are we such ageists? I mean. <laughs> <laughs> I want to talk about, I mean, a good portion of the fantasy community, a lot of people who've been doing this are in that 30 to 40 range, right? I mean, let's be honest. A lot of us are in that 30 to 40 range, some older, some younger. So I want to talk about an oldie, but a goodie here on the list. A guy that probably gets knocked because of his age a little bit. And that's Jakari Robertson there out of Wake Forest, 24 years old. Probably by the time we get into this, nobody's talking about him. Nobody's talked about him at all through this whole process. But here he is, number two on kind of your sleeper list here, when I'm looking at these numbers right now, of 2022 Dynasty Draft Profile Top Sleepers. Why is no one talking about him? Well, he's in a great situation, and that that's one of the advantages of, you know, I mean, I don't know if I could call it an advantage because you're signing an undrafted free agent contract over a rookie contract, but, you know, that that is one of the advantages is you kind of pick where you want to go, and he landed in a great spot. They did draft Jalen Tolbert, talking about the Dallas Cowboys, you know, obviously lost Amari, Amari Cooper, and then and then uh, the, and they've had they had other losses as well. Um, Cedric Wilson went to Miami, um, so you know there's there's a lot of there's a lot of targets up for grabs, and then and then Michael Gallup's coming off the ACL, so I mean there's there's some potential playing time there. Um, you know, as far as why he went undrafted, um, it's 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 really difficult for me to understand that one. Um, it, it, but you know, that's why I detailed him in the, in that profiles, because, uh, you know, I felt like he deserved to be, I felt like every player that I profiled, the all six deserve to be drafted. Um, you know, obviously I don't, I don't own an NFL team. I don't, I don't manage an NFL team. And if I did, then, you know, I'd be taking, I'd be paying, I'd be heavily paying into, to analytics. Also film. I think, I think there's a, there's a balance between film and analytics that you have to marry. And if you're not doing that, you're not doing the job, right? I feel like there's a lot of teams, a lot of general managers that aren't doing their jobs right. And, 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 you know, and, and at the same time, I feel like there's, there's a lot of, uh, a lot of bias towards the information that's floating out there. You know, you have a lot of these athletic reports saying this guy believes this, that guy believes that. I really think NFL teams are reading all that crap. I'm not saying the athletics writing is crap. I'm saying that uh, opinions are crap in general. Um, and and so I think I think if you're not following the film and you're not you're not marrying it to the analytics for your for your player evaluations, you're not doing it right as an NFL uh, from an NFL team perspective, not from a fantasy perspective. That doesn't mean that's what everyone needs to be doing with their fantasy teams. Not as many people have the time on their hands that NFL teams do or that I do. So that's this is what I do for a living. It's different. Um, but uh, yeah, Jakari Roberson was was beast, and especially in 2020. I mean, he was he was I think the the he, yards per route run. He was only behind guys like um, Devonte Smith, Devonta Smith, and uh, um, there was another person that was ahead of him. But still, I mean, he was just beast, and 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 his emergence was it coincided with the emergence of Sam Hartman, who's a guy I like for 2023. Um, and, and, you know, it, it's, it's just one of those things where uh, we, we have a lot of guys that, that went undrafted, but here's, here's the other factor is this was one of the deepest running back classes. And in, in my opinion, it was the deepest in NFL history. So we had a lot of running backs that didn't get drafted that deserved to get drafted because there was just there was only so many. If you go look at the list of the guy, the running backs that got drafted, 
it's a laundry list. It's because it was so deep. Mm-hmm. And, and so there were a lot of guys that were pushed down for various reasons. Another, another guy I love, Kennedy Brooks, didn't yeah. get drafted. He had some off-field stuff. This guy, I don't care what anybody says about him. This guy's a baller. And he got where he did he end up going? Philadelphia, which is okay. a good spot for Great him. Spot. Yeah. There's there's really, I mean, you know, you got Kenneth Gainwell there, but we've seen what Philadelphia does. And and Miles Sanders, you know, he goes down, he scrapes his knees out for several games. So <laughs> it's a great spot for Kennedy Brooks. Don't don't be surprised if his name pops up this year. But um, you know, as far as Roberson, he's going to Dallas. There's a lot of targets there. Um, they did draft Jalen Tolbert, another kid. Uh, he was he was just a dynamite personality. Met him at the combine. I, I absolutely loved uh, listening to his interview. He was he was a, an interesting kid, a kid that um, you know he he believes in himself and he's got just very confident, you know. And and I, I love seeing that. And he he was a little he was more imposing than I was expecting as well. You know, I, I thought group of five kid. He was going to be smaller or you know not as thick, not not height wise, but thick. Wise. Now this kid was this kid was thick, so you know he's got he's got he's got the intimidation factor going on. Um, so I, I think he's gonna he's gonna he's gonna hit the ground running at Dallas. But there's still plenty of targets there available for Jaquari to 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 get in into that situation. Of course, they added Jake Ferguson as well, the Mister uh, Choose Violence. I love I love that quote that he gave <laughs> at the combine. Uh, that, that kid's going to be something in the NFL. Of course, he's very Al- Alvarez's uh, grandson. So, um, you know, he comes from good stock. But, uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I, people are like, oh, you know, be down on Dak Prescott. Now, I'm not buying all that. This is this is going to be a good team. Um, you know, I think I think Amari was he had a little bit of the ego factor going on that that kind of held the offense back a little bit. Um, I think it's going to be better. I think it's going to be we're going to see C.D. Lamb unleashed this year. And then and then I love Michael Gallup. I think when he gets off, you know, gets off the ACL, um, which we definitely don't want to see him tear that same knee again, because uh, that's not good. We know about those uh, those double ACL tears in the same knee. It's not good. But if he can avoid that, I think I think we're going to look at a, a We're going to see a really explosive offense come together. And they also address the offensive line. So I think I think we're going to see better out of Zeke this year. Um, you know, Tony Pollard was already a beast and, uh, you know, and then, and then they've got the, 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 uh, the tight end double connection there with Jake Ferguson now going there with Schultz. I think it's, it, it's, it's going to be a good team. Definitely. Before I let major take over here, um, just going over to fastypoints.com. You pull up this list. Some of these other players that you profiled here, Master Teague, Kevin Brown, out of incarnate word, Derek Young out of Lenore Rain, a home of. Kyle Duggar, let's be honest, another good player coming out of that program there. And you've got about 20 players kind of ranked here from the smaller schools out of the FCS, uh, D2 kind of thing, and then obviously a bunch of the other guys all thrown together. You can find that over at fantasypoints.com. Hey, you know what? If you're looking for that subscription right now, go over to fantasypoints.com. Use promo code VIPERS22. We'll get you 10% off that subscription today. Now, Major, over to you. Yeah, I mean – 2022 does seem like it was a year ago already. Like we've talked about these players, we beat them to, to death. You know what I mean? So let's let's get to 2023, uh, where the quarterback makes a return. The quarterbacks are going to be some of the best athletes in this draft. Uh, you got CJ Stroud and you got Bryce Young. Um, give me your who who you're taking out of those two, and then you can run through some of the people that we should keep an eye on. Well, it, it, it doesn't really matter. It's it's it, it pick your flavor. The NFL team it'll depend on the NFL team. Uh, my choice, I, I you know I'm I'm an Ohio State Buckeye fan. I um I, I grew up in Florida. I moved to Columbus for a couple of years when I was in elementary school, and that's when I I started watching college football. And uh, and it, it just so happened to be that I was living in Columbus, you know. So I sort of I. I've been a, a a diehard Buckeye fan, but you know, uh, in the in the fantasy industry, uh, bias does it doesn't cut it. So uh, you know, I, I keep it real with with the Ohio State Buckeyes. If if the guy sucks, I'm not going to promote him. But you know, I love C.J. Stroud. I mean, this kid, the ball placement, the accuracy, the timing—it's just beautiful. It's beautiful when it's on. Um, the one thing I will point out is his emergence. It it, it perfectly coincided with a kid that I think could be the number one pick in the draft 
ahead of both of those quarterbacks. But he's probably not going to be because we know there's only been two wide receivers ever drafted first overall. But uh, Jackson Smith and Jigba, JSN, JSN, get it going. Yeah. Oh, this kid is unbelievable. I can't, I can't stop talking about him. But for me, Bryce Young is the he's going to be the number one pick in the draft. I love, I love Bryce Young. Um, he's not, he's not, he's a, he's a pass first kid. He's a, he's a pocket passer, you know, so, so don't, don't expect just because he's shorter, don't expect him to be this, you know, this dual threat kind of guy. Um, he's, he's got just unbelievable pocket presence, really good, really good footwork um, and, and just accuracy. If you, if you go back to the Georgia game, I mean, really go back and watch it when, you know, they lost Jamison Williams in the SEC championship. They lost John Matchy. I mean, they, and they're, they're playing, they're starting uh true freshman in the second half of the SEC or of the national championship. Go back and look at the ball placement on the incompletions, <laughs> even the, okay. So even the one, where he the end of the game when he threw an interception, you can, if you go back and you look at the body, the 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 um, uh, the way that the receiver reacts and the way that Bryce Young reacts was obviously a miss miscommunication uh, where the young wide receiver just didn't know his route. Bryce Young throws the ball like where it's supposed to be at all times. This kid is unbelievable okay so the four of the top 10 kids that i have um at every position qb running back wide receiver tight end every skill position are going to be in the 2023 draft um but if you look outside the top 10 12 of the top 20 quarterbacks in college football are going to be in the 2023 draft and it just it dwarfs every uh, every other skill position. This class is super stacked at quarterback. I'm talking they're going to they're going to they're going to put the 1983 quarterback class to shame. That's how good this class is. Yeah, I'm with you on that. Um any running backs that pop out to you? Oh, absolutely. They're, like I said, four of the top 10 and actually four of the top five running backs, my Debbie running backs in the running back class, obviously B. John Robinson. If right. you don't know who B. John Robinson is, go look him up. This guy's had a career that is, I mean, it's basically legend. Uh, he comes from like a really small school in Arizona and where it doesn't get a lot of fanfare for football, and but that doesn't mean Arizona is not a big football state. It absolutely is in the high school ranks. Uh, but he emerged and everybody knew who he was. Um, that he's, he's a man child. That's the only way I can put it. I, there's, there's no question. He's going to be a first round pick next year at running back. And that's not something we have very often, you know, and then, uh, you know, the other three guys here, uh, Zach Evans, Jameer Gibbs and, and Devin is Shane. So Zach Evans, he transferred from TCU to Ole Miss this year. Um, it, he's his his quickness is like no other in this class wait till you, you just have to you just have to look at it for yourself uh his his maneuverability is just ridiculous um then we got jameer gibbs he transferred he transferred from georgia tech which it was an early commit that he had and then um and he tried to stick it out he stayed for two years but he couldn't pass up an opportunity to play with Bryce Young. So he's going to be headlining the, the Alabama backfield this year. Watch out for Jameer Gibbs. Um, easily the best receiving running back in college football. Uh, he's going to hit the ground running in the NFL. But don't forget about Devin Shane, Texas A&M. You know, I like Isaiah Spiller. I think he's more of a, a raw project. Um, but still, I like him. I like him. He's He's got a lot. I think, I think put about 10 more pounds on him, and he's a different running back. That's what he played as as uh, in 2020. I think that's that's what uh, the Chargers are going to want him to do. Put a little bit little bit more weight on because he's going to be an inside mauler. He's got some jump cuts that just um, really stood out. Yeah, he's not an athletic uh, you know phenomenon, but I, I really like uh, Isaiah Spiller, but not as much as I like Devin and Shane. Devin and Shane is going to be the fastest running back in the NFL next, and when he gets drafted. Um, this kid is uh, he he's fast enough to go to the Olympics. That's how fast he is. And he's yeah. running back. Yeah. Remind me uh, of Tyreek a little bit with the speed. How is this like faster than everyone? You know? Oh, absolutely. Devin Shane is 
legit. Go watch the the kickoff return against Alabama, where he returned it 100 yards. I'm just this kid is, I mean, just just crazy freaky. Uh, just I, I I can't even stop talking about this kid. Devin Shane is legit. So so two guys that I like. I want you to kind of see if you can uh, fill me in a little bit more on them. But uh, UCLA uh, Zach Charbonnet from uh, you know transfer from Michigan a year ago. Yeah. Size, speed, like he does everything right. Not not too like not like sexier by any means, but he just he's always making plays. He's always falling forward. He's always getting first downs. Always getting touchdowns. What do you have on him? Yeah, I like him quite a bit. So he came out, I believe he was like the RB3 in that class, um, out of his high school class. I ha- right now I have him at RB22. Uh, he shared the backfield with Britton, Britton Brown last year at, at, at UCLA. Um, and, yeah, he he really uh, exploded early in the year, kind of quiet down the stretch. But I like him quite a bit, actually. Um, and and he's a guy that, that can definitely move up for me. Um, and, you know, so, so somebody I like, I, I, I'm, we, we didn't have, uh, we didn't have athletic testing from him. So, um, it's gonna, uh, for, you know, coming out of high school, but, uh, yeah, six, six foot one, 220 That's pounds. Right. I mean, yeah. this kid's he's, he's, a, he's a mauler. Um, and, and I watched a few of his games. I, I haven't, I haven't scouted him yet. He, cause he was further down my list. But I did watch a few of his games, and yeah, you, you got to put some some legitimate, uh, uh, you know, legitimate base on him, or he's gonna run over you. Yeah, and then and my last guy here is uh, Muhammad Ink Ibrahim from uh, yeah. Minnesota. He yeah. had that nasty injury, and I think he was probably the best back um, in the nation right before he got that that injury. I really like his game. Hopefully, he could come back from that injury, but. Um, what, what do you have on Ibrahim? Oh man, he was he was shredding Ohio State in that game where he tore tore his Achilles, man. And it, yeah, it was nasty because they showed like a a, a close up of the back right. of his leg as it popped. Oh, it was yeah. gross, man. Felt so sorry for him. Looked like one of those where it goes up into your knee. Yeah, oh, that's awful. That's so awful to see. Um, now Ibrahim, I have him as RB 15. I, I love this kid and, you know, being the RB 15, just like for Zach Charbonnet, it's, it's not a knock on him because, you know, there's some talented running backs in the country. Um, so if you're in my top 25, you're legit. Uh, at least I believe you are. And, um, I I'm all over Ibrahim. I've, I've, I've moved him up and down between the 10 and 20 range. Um, and I've, I've settled at, at RB 15, but yeah, I mean, as long as he gets, as long as it, okay. So when he, when he does retake the field, his explosion, it's not going to be there. Um, NFL teams are going to know that they're going to know it's, it's like a PCL injury it takes a little bit of time. Cause that, 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 that explosion is not going to come right away um, after an Achilles tear. Um, we saw that with, with Cam Akers, you know, he, he was able to do everything that he could do before. He just wasn't as explosive, but that's going to come. That doesn't mean you move Cam Akers down your board. Um, it, Cam Akers is going to be a beast. He's still, you know, wh- there, there's no, there's no information out there on Achilles tears or yeah. So, I mean, you like, can no, right? the same Achilles, you know, right. Right. It's so not, wait, it's, have you heard anything? Ibrahim? Have you heard anything about his injury, how he's doing, how his uh, recovery is? Have you heard anything on that front? Yeah. So, uh, they just had, they just had one of their young, young running backs transfer out. And I think that's about as, as positive of, of a report Marquise Irving just transferred out went over to, to Oregon. So I think that's a, that's a great report because that, that goes to show there's not going to be a whole lot of carries available here. The, they still have, if they saw Trace and Potts, he's, he's another talented kid, um, but nowhere near as much as Ibrahim. So we're going to see Trace and Potts early in the year, probably going to see him lead the backfield first couple of games, but we're going to see Ibrahim. He's, he's, he's not expected to hit the, to, to hit the early season uh, strong, but he's going to, he's going to be back around week three or four. Perfect. Yeah, good answers, man. And with that, this is going to come to the conclusion of the Viper cast. We'll have Wes on a little bit later, talk about going behind the grind with him, getting a little bit of his backstory here. But I leave you with this. We started the show, talk about Velas Jones Jr. So let me put it this way. I'm your Velas. I'm your fire at your desire. Um, and this has been the Viper cast presented by the Fancy Points Media Group. We'll see you next week. Take care now. <laughs>